All right, um, here is, um, we bless the Lord for this powerful hour and this season. Uh, today I have with me a personality and we are going to talk about um, uh, her book, about some important uh, questions, uh, getting to our religion, whether it be uh, an altar, whether you are a Christian, a non-believer, whatever is your profession, I believe that this discussion is going to um, open your eyes of understanding to see what is going on in our life. So, without wasting much time, uh, we want to know who our personality is today or who our guest is today. So, can we know who you are? Well, hi, uh, thank you for having me. My name is Bitsy Kemper, and I am the author currently of uh, 21 children's books. I have uh, three more coming out very soon. I have one for moms and kids, and then I have two more children's books um, that are in the Christian arena coming out in 2025. Oh, that's great, uh, BHC. That's great, BHC, having you on the podcast. So you've written 21 books for children. So uh, what kind of books do you write? Uh, is it a fictional or non-fictional? Is it a religious Christian children? Can we know much about the books? Sure. So the books that I have out now, they, they've, but most of them have been out for a while. Um, many of them are series or parts of series. And they're non-fiction books for the school and library market. So they're not something you would necessarily walk into a Barnes & Noble or um, yeah, a bookstore and find on the shelf because they're not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be in the school and library market. So they're educational and mostly nonfiction. And um, the books that I have coming out are Christian. So I'm very excited because these are going to be for the um, mass market audience, I guess you would say. So these are books that you would be able to walk into um, a bookstore and see on a shelf or, or, or be able to order. So I'm excited about those. And I'm also extra excited because these are the first books that I've written in the Christian arena because I've always kind of had a secret spy goal of, of sneaking religion in to people's lives like, you know, just passive aggressively mentioning, oh, when I was in church this weekend or, you know, <laughs> things like that, trying to normalize it because it feels like you can talk about any religion except Christianity these days. So I, I have a secret spy mission of, of, of normalizing Christianity again, of making it acceptable to say Christ or Jesus or even use the word church in a sentence. So... I'm very excited that I'll be able to do that with these these three books that I have coming out. Well, that's great, uh, Beach C. So, um, before we dive more into your book or your books, um, there are some people who are not Christians, but they still write uh, religious or Christian books. So, can we know much about your faith? Are you a Christian? Where do you fellowship? How do you become born again? Can we know much about your religious background? Sure. I am a uh, born uh, Catholic, and I've been Catholic my whole life. And there are some people that don't, for some reason, understand that Catholic is Christian. And that has always perplexed me. But uh, Catholicism is under the same Christian umbrella. We are 100% Christian. And um, so I go to, I, I attend Catholic Church. I've been very active in the Catholic Church and uh, my whole life. And so the times that I've been participating in any kind of church, I never really thought, honestly, about creating books for church because the writing that I've been doing has, I guess I just didn't think of the opportunity in my secret spy way in life of sprinkling in church and trying to normalize God and Jesus. I don't know why until very recently, I, I guess I just didn't have the courage or the confidence to start thinking, maybe I can do this in my books as well. And um, the book that I have coming out right now, it's called uh, Mommy and Me Micro Moments. And it is 
based on my, I hope you don't mind me, diverse, I know we were talking about religion, but my neighbor was, she's got four, four kids and the neighbor across the street has three kids and um, the neighbor, other two neighbors have one kid each. We all get together most days and there's chaos right? There's constant chaos. And one of the kids walked up to one of the moms and had a leaf. And the mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go away. Moms are talking. And it just struck me that that is such a golden moment, a golden opportunity to spend time with your child because that window of time where he wants to show you a leaf goes by so quickly. My kids are in their teens and older now. And I, I just felt so bad and there was no way I felt for me to say, please stop what you're doing and talk to your child because this opportunity is going to be gone in the blink of an eye. I mean, there was no real way for me to do that. And that just got me thinking about ways that we dismiss an opportunity because we're so busy focused on other things that as busy moms, similarly as busy people, we miss opportunities like that to pray. And so throughout life and in general with prayer, no matter what religion you're, you practice, we're too busy to do it. And so there's so many opportunities that we have that we have religion important in our life. We say it, yet we don't take two minutes before grace we don't take two seconds before grace to say thank you. I mean, before, you know, before we eat to say thank you for this food. We don't say two seconds, two, we, we don't take two seconds after somebody is kind to us to say, thank you, Jesus, for putting this person in my life. So religion has always been a part of my life and just increasingly so as I became a mom. And I've been noticing that there are so many ways, so many opportunities for us to put God in our life that we just don't see. Well, that's great. So, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so Bitsy, I think you, you really uh, hit a point. So you say you, you were Catholic and you were born into, into uh, Catholicism, uh, Catholicism, if I'm making a mistake out, out there. So um, is it that you, you, you give your life to Christ Jesus? I want to be a little curious about that one. Have you, did you confess that Christ Jesus is your Lord? Uh, or is that you were just born into the church? I mean, that we want to know much about um, the, the background there. Yes. So when, in, in, in uh, when we're in Catholicism, we're baptized as a young child into the, the as with the Lord as our, our, our Savior. And we have um, a godparent that, that is, that backs us up on that when the parent brings the, the, child brings us to the Lord. Then as we are older and we have what's called a confirmation where we confirm our baptismal um, Lord is our, our, our savior. We, we, we confirm that once we are old enough to recognize what those oaths were that we took as a baby when we couldn't say them for ourselves, but other people said them for us. So we, we have, uh, I guess, two opportunities where we commit ourselves with Jesus Lord as our Savior. All right. All right, Bitsy. Okay, so um, the reason I want to enter deep in is because um, my audience, most of them are Christians, and so most often uh, they want to be a little curious about maybe our guest and our, our personality speaking to us. And before we dive much into your book, um, is there any specific um, Christian book you've written? Maybe that, that is mainly for only Christians. And can you give us maybe, if you're reading such a book, can you give us the title of the book and what is inside the book and what we can learn from that particular book you wrote for Christians? Is there any, any book like that you wrote only for Christians? Um, well, I would say the one that I have coming up, it's going to be out um, in time for Mother's Day in 2024, so coming up. So that's my first Christian book specific to Christians because it's a devotional. Um, and it's called uh, Mommy and Me, uh, Micro Moments, a fun devotional for busy moms and kids. And that is specific for, for moms and their children to do together. And it's a traditional 
format, a devotional format, where there is a Bible quote, there is, an, um, usually you would read a passage, and then you would say a prayer at the end. That's a traditional devotional um, format. So in this one, it in the one that I've written, it's a it starts out with a, uh, a Bible verse. Then there's an activity for the mom and child to do together. It might be telling a joke. It might be playing a version of, um, or you know, do you see what I see kind of thing. It might be um, an activity where they go do something. But it never takes more than about five minutes. And then at the very end, there's a prayer for the mother and child to say together that's directly related to the verse and the activity that they did. And then there's a silent prayer for mom to say as she's tucking in her little one or as she's uh, going about her day. Well, that's, so really, that's very Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's specific. What I, wanted, what I wanted to mention there, um, Henry, I'm sorry if you don't mind me um, adding to that. What I have found in the people that have read the book so far Again, remember I told you about my secret spy um, mission <laughs> to get people to to be okay with using the word God. Um, what I have found is people that aren't very religious, if you will, that aren't that wouldn't say I'm a Christian. You know, there are they wouldn't just use that in a sentence. They have enjoyed this book just just doing the activities together with their kids, and they might skip the verse, they might skip the prayer. But, you know, I, Henry, I think they're still reading it, you know, it's still affecting them, they're still seeing it. So I think they're still catching on to the importance of, of either reading the Bible or the importance of saying that prayer, saying that prayer together with their child, or saying that prayer together, you know, not together, but just saying that prayer one on one as a mom, saying, either thank you or saying, help me. So that's my first book that I've written specific for, for Christians or non-Christians to offer thanks and ask for help All right. doing, living a busy life. All right, Betsy. Okay. So, so, um, into diving in, into, um, your, your book about, um, that, um, Jenna, we want to know um, what really inspired you to become an altar, specifically, let's say, for, for children. What inspired you to become an altar uh, as a writer? Okay, well, um, I wrote my first children's book. I didn't, well, I, I've done a lot of writing in my, in my previous life, in my corporate life. I worked in PR and marketing. So I did a lot of ghost writing and writing a lot of corporate materials, but I never really thought of myself as a writer, if you will. But um, I part, one of the, one of the programs that I worked on was using the computer with your family. So I ended up co-writing a nationally syndicated newspaper column. So every week, uh, my coworker and I, we wrote a, a, a nationally syndicated newspaper column about using the computer with your family. And we did that for like five years. And then when I left the company, I continued writing a newspaper column just for my local, for, for the Sacramento Bee, for my paper where I live. And I thought, you know, I really like this writing part. I never really thought of myself as a writer, but gosh, I like this. Then when I was on walks with my youngest child, I started telling a story in verse just to keep myself entertained as <laughs> three kids in, in four years. And um, I would challenge myself in the walks with my child to add a verse each walk. So I would re repeat the same thing and then add a verse. And I'd ask him for ideas. And what do you think, you know, where should the frog go next kind of thing? And I thought, gosh, this is really, really fun. I'm enjoying this. I should write a book. <laughs> and I did, and it's absolutely terrible. It will never get published. But um, I went to my first writer's conference because of that story. And I just, it was so well, it was such a different environment than the corporate cutthroat world of if I succeed, that means you can't. Um, the children's book industry is, is just lovely. It's full of people that recognize if you write a children's book, 
that succeeds, that's a good thing because that means people are buying children's books. And that means if I have a children's book, they might buy mine too. So everybody wants everybody else to succeed. And it was so foreign to me and so wonderful and welcoming that um, I've never left. I've, I've been a children's book writer ever since. Well, that's great, uh, Betsy, because I myself, I think I wrote a children's book, I, did, I think um, last month or last three months or so, but there is no sales on my children's book. I thought maybe that would rather help children, but nobody engaged that book. So I don't know how much about into it. So, so what is the misconception about writing Christian books or religious books? What is the misconception about? Because the people who say if you write religious book, it will, it will not sell. If you write Christian books, it will not sell. So what is the misconception about Christian books in that arena? Well, well, I know, okay, there, there's, two, there's a couple of, of misconceptions about a children's book. I'll tell you, I'll start with that. And the first thing is that a children's book is easy to do because you think there's few words and um, how hard can it be, right? Because you you read so many, but but that's why it's deceptive, because a, a really good children's book makes it look really easy to write, and that's why there's some children's book authors that I hate because they're so good, they're so good at what they do that it's I want to scream like how how did you do that so successfully? Like, I just, how did you write a complete story in 500 words with a beginning, a middle, and end with a main character that I'm rooting for, that overcomes a problem, that all happens in, in, in 20 pages, and it's a lovely story. Like, it's frustrating to me as a writer when I see a really good one because they do it so well. So, a Good children's book story is very, very hard to write. And there's kind of a formula to it. And it's, you don't really realize it until you start studying children's books and you realize, ah, okay, I get it. And another thing that's interesting with writing children's books is a lot of new authors say, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to write a children's book that doesn't follow that formula. And well, you know, that doesn't work. That's not what people want to see. That's not what people want to read. That's not what parents buy. That's not what a traditional publisher is going to purchase. That, you know, that's not a manuscript an editor or an agent is going to go for because they know that's not what a parent's going to buy. So you can put a twist on a formula. I mean, you can put a twist on something, but they don't want it so unique that it's different. And I mean, everyone's heard the story about Harry. On the shelf. They didn't know if it was children's, it was too long. It was science fiction, but it was realistic. You know, they didn't know what to do with it. So I don't know how many rejections she had, 40 or whatever. And so people think, well, you know, I can take a chance like that. Well, you know, not for your first book. Why don't you follow the rules, get your first book out, get some success under your belts, and then try something wildly different, right? Just, you need to know what the rules are before you can start breaking them. So that's some advice that I have for children's books. Um, and also a very little known fact is when you write a children's book, you don't illustrate it you don't do the pictures yourself when you submit it for traditional publishing that is in the traditional publishing world the editor finds the illustrator for you in fact uh, you don't even choose the illustrator they do that and um, in writing children's books you wouldn't say things like she was wearing a red dress because unless that red dress has something very important that plays out at the end of the story is the illustrator's choice as to what color that dress is going to be. She might not even be wearing a dress, again, unless that dress is important later on. So there's little things like that, like I'm saying, that you need to learn the rules before you can break them. So there's a lot to learn about writing, writing a children's book, writing a successful one. I mean, it's easy to write a children's book, but it's very hard to write a 
good children's book. Um, and then um, uh, a pastor you had asked about writing uh, for the Christian market. And I'm still new there. I've only written these first three ones that are coming out. And what I have learned there is they don't have to be quote unquote Christian. You know, they don't have to hit you over the head with Christianity messages. They can be a book that's good to read, but also include messages that revert people back to prayer, that acknowledge God, that have a Bible verse, that they don't have to have a happy ending, but they do have to do something that reverts the main character back back to Jesus. So all right that, that's my uh, all right bitsy that's a great uh, tip given out that um as writing children's book uh, I, i've learned some lesson from this um talk as you said out there but i also want to to, to know about um this key concept so for how long have you been uh, been writing the children's book how long now uh my first book came out in 2006 i think yeah, probably. Yeah, I think. Like, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it might me. Whoa, no. You know what? Uh, was after. No, I think it came out in 2004. Oh, yeah, no. I think that my first my first my first series came out in 2004. OK, 2004. So I mean, you've been around for getting to about 19 years, if we can say that you, you've you wrote your first book about 19 years ago, right? Or your, your okay. first script, uh, your first. Okay, that's great. So what advice do you have for writers since you have some uh, experience in writing? So what advice do you have for maybe people who write books or who write children's books? What advice do you have for them? Okay, I would say my first advice for writers is to read. To read the kinds of books that you want to write. Now, if you write science fiction, read science fiction. If you write children's books, there's a range of children's books, right? There's board books, picture books, chapter books, middle grade, young adult. All of them have a different age range. And here's something. Oh, um, Pastor, I'm going to ask you a question. How do you know? This is children's book, and it's kind of not fair to put you on the spot. But how do you know the age of the reader that a children's book is intended for. How, if, if you saw a book on a shelf and you couldn't see the cover, how would you know the age that that book is intended for? Uh, well, I have to, to, to look at the contents of the book. Um, right. Uh, yeah, the content um, and maybe, yeah, the, the introduction, maybe the book um introduction maybe the book mm -hmm. uh, summary um, yeah so yeah. if i can get the, the summary of the book or maybe the blurb or something like that i can know who actually the, the, the content is for right yeah. a lot of yeah a lot of people will say the vocabulary or the um you know basically what the content is but here's this here's here is also, another little known fact for, for uh, your listeners, the age of the main character. The age of the main character is basically the age of the target reader for a children's book. Um, in kids' books, a child never wants to read a story about someone who's younger than them, right? A first grader isn't going to want to read a story about a newborn baby, a uh, second grader is not going to read a book about the first day of kindergarten because that's so, you know, two years ago. A um, uh, high schooler is not going to read a book about someone who's 11 years old. They will read ab above their age range. A kindergartner, if they have the ability to, will read a story about a second grader. Um, but for the most part, they'll only read a story about a kid that's their age or older. So now you know, if, if you know nothing else about the story, the age of the main character is the age or younger of the reader. So 
Now you know that's how, if you're going to read stories for the age range that you want to write for, you need to make sure that your main character is that age or older. And um, find those books. Find books for, for children, or if you're reading in the adults, let's say you want to read it. If you want to write a devotional, for example, let's say you want to write a Christian devotional, read Christian devotionals. See how they're done. Dissect them. What makes these books great? If you want to read, let's go back to science fiction. Let's say you want to read, write a science fiction book that takes place in the future. What about that book made an editor say, I have to get this book published? What about that book made a reader say, I need to buy this book. I need to give, I need to hand somebody 20 of my own dollars to take this book home with me. So dissect them. I'm not saying, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying copy them, but read, read, read. See what all these people are doing that makes them successful. What is it that they are doing that makes it so easy? And... One of the reasons I don't write young adult, I, I, I do write for teens. Some of the stories I have are for teens, but they're for not, but they're nonfiction. I could never write a, a fiction young adult because there's so many people like, you know, John Green that do it so well. I could never compete with that. So read, 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 read. See what the people that you want to do are doing well. Then, write, 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 write. But don't write to get published right now, okay? If you want to be a writer, if you want to be an author, just write. Write because you enjoy it. Now, my husband plays soccer. He's, he's 60. <laughs> he plays soccer every Monday through Friday at noon, from noon to two, with a bunch of people that he used to work with. Now, he does it because he enjoys it. Is he ever going to get drafted to play professional soccer? No. He plays soccer because he loves it. So don't think that every time you sit in front of your computer or you sit in front of your notebook with your pencil that you're writing something just to get a book contract. Just enjoy it. Have a good time. Write because you enjoy writing. Otherwise, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You know, my husband plays soccer because he's in, he enjoys the sport. I think you should write because you enjoy writing. Um, so my first advice is read. My second ad a piece of advice is write. And my third piece of advice that's important, I think, is to join a critique group. Join a critique group that has a variety of experience levels in 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 the genre that you're writing. One time I had a group of wonderful, caring, um, it was a critique group and they were wonderful. But some people wrote contemporary fiction, some people wrote poetry, some people wrote science fiction, I wrote children's books. And we were all very doing our very best to give each other advice. But Honestly, I don't know anything about poetry. Uh, honestly, I don't know anything about science fiction. So I felt bad when I read their work and gave them feedback because I didn't know if I was qualified. I mean, I'm qualified to know whether or not something is well written. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I was really doing them justice and giving them the feedback that they needed. So try to find a critique group that is in your genre where people are not all beginners, because that's kind of the blind leading the blind, but a group of all beginners is still better than no group at all. So that's my three pieces of advice for writers is to read, to write, and join a critique group with a variety of experience level in your genre. Well, that's great, uh, BTC. So read, um, write and then um, join critique uh, groups. That is a very powerful advice. I myself, I'm also a writer as well, so I think I'm also picking some lesson from what uh, you said out oh, there. Good. But you see, uh, yeah, I, I'm also a writer. By God, we have written several books as well, so I'm also picking something from it. But my issue was that I wrote children's book, and uh, you said something that 
uh, if you write children's book you don't have to um, maybe do the um, illustration yourself I did the illustration myself so I think I have to get maybe I have an, I have a, an editor who edits my book covers for me but when I wrote the children's mm -hmm. book I did the, the illustration by myself so I think I have to send the book to my editor my cover design so that he can design maybe some artwork for me in the book so i think i'll work on that as well okay yeah. right so because uh, uh, sorry for interrupting but i did want to point out that a picture book is is unique in that half it's it's 50 um it relies just as much on the pictures as it does on the words so if you just read the words of a picture book it shouldn't make you really much sense if you just looked at the pictures of a picture book it really shouldn't make sense but when you put them together there's the magic so that's why i was explaining why the color red you know you don't want to say she was in a red dress because the picture is going to say that so that that's why a picture that that's why i love them so much because they they are very hard to do and when you get it right it's absolutely beautiful so, so yeah, um, I, I do suggest. Okay, so it. I think um, uh, authors or maybe people who write children's book have greater impact on children because most often children are able to learn things faster when they are more younger. So um, it's about authors or maybe writers are uh, influencing the children that uh, through books or through writing. So I think that authors. Are, are doing a great work and we need people like writers who can impart some kind of moral lesson in their maybe in their stories so that children can grow up emotionally because most of the i don't often read children's book but um to my little understanding i think that um authors or writers who write children's books should impart some kind of moral lessons in their books yeah so so what do you think about that one like a, a, writing something that will morally uh, build the children up to become responsible people in life? Well, um, um, I'm going to say yes with an asterisk. Yes. However, um, you don't want to underestimate the intelligence of the child. Like, you shouldn't have to say, therefore, you should never lie to your parents, you know, for example. Uh, therefore, sinning is bad. I mean, if you write the story effectively, they should understand the the implications of what was wrong. If you write the story effectively, they should understand the moral of the story without you ever having to say it. Um, ending with a Bible quote, for example, that summarizes the moral of the story is a perfect way to get that point across. Um, but you shouldn't you shouldn't have to say the moral of the story is um or you know so what one thing she learned was because those kinds of sentences those kinds of things when it comes to traditional publishing uh, the, 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 again I, I should have clarified that when it comes to traditional publishing editors and publishers um flag those as um beginner writers because they know that beginner writers um are more intent on imparting the lesson than they are intent on writing a good story. So if your intent is to teach a lesson, then maybe uh, th that has a different purpose than writing a children's book. Does that make sense? Mm, because uh, all I was saying that uh, we have, I was saying that we have to be more focused on the imparting the, the moral lesson to the children than just maybe making them although as children as you say children are more very intelligent maybe they can pick the lesson from the book mm -hmm. uh, but as i said I, I don't read much of children's book but with my little uh, understanding I, I think that children uh, foundation or children's uh, character or behavior are started or maybe are built in their in their prime maybe in their youthful in their tender age so as a children author's book maybe as an author of children's book um we have to um rather build them up so that by what they read we are rather 
uh, upgrading them to become responsible people because i, I yeah. think um yeah. today think we can see that yeah because today we can see that the lgbt kill like the lesbian the gay the bisexual the transgender is it's been it's been uh, promoted in several uh, places in several parts of america so today people can say a man can choose a man a woman can choose a woman it's been as in most several countries so and there are books that are advocating such behavior so i believe that maybe as christian or maybe as authors of children's book we have to invite them to let them know that these are the dangers of maybe lesbianism these are the dangers of maybe um gay or homosexuality uh, and let them know that yes we are training their mind to become responsible future leaders in life and rather to just maybe just make them happy and tell them maybe stories that is my point of view out here okay i see i see what you're saying yeah i and for for me those are the kinds of things where like i just i just don't see why they have to be in children's books i just don't i don't I don't know why that they have to be the main point of anything. And I think love should be a, the po the point of a children's book, not, you know what I mean? I don't know wh why, I, I think that's the lesson a children's book should be. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, we, just that. Because uh, maybe, it, like, let's say, maybe at the end of the story, maybe then it, it shows that we have to live in love. Maybe at the end of the story, we have to live in unity. At the end of the story, we have to speak the truth. At the end of the story, we have to uh, be obedient. At the end of the story, we have to be kind. So if um, uh, authors, I am not trying to enter into children's book. I am a non-fictional author. I write books like non-fictional books, uh, specifically for Christians most of my target audience are christians but i also want to venture into children's book and as we were speaking i picked some lesson from what you just said so um as time goes on when i begin to maybe enter more into children's book i'm going to enter more into that arena to imbibe them with moral lesson to be for them to be truthful to be kind to be loving to be joyful to be obedient uh to be um uh good in, in their life because there are many books out there which are um educating children to behave in a bad way and as i said like we have some books that advocate um lesbianism i, I myself you see when, when you check the life of those who are maybe homosexuals or gays or lesbian you see that their end is not very good people are in the hospital they are having strange sickness they have been strained diseases because of homosexuality, because of lesbianism. And people are dying prematurely because of lesbianism, because of homosexuality, because of bestiality. And so if we don't educate the children in books with those children's books and we rather try to advocate them, we are rather destroying the future of our children. That, that is what I think that all tests of Christian or all tests of children's books should rather uh, focus more than to just maybe give out maybe fictional books to tell stories. Maybe even the stories, they can even try to educate the children whilst they are writing the stories out there. Hello. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still here. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so BC, so since, since you are into, um, um, I check your all tap on Amazon and I, I've gone through some of the books. You've written many, many books on, 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 on and Amazon. So can I ask, what is your best-selling book on Amazon and what is the book about? Oh, well, um, since I am in the school and library market, I actually don't really track those books because they're not, the, the best-sellingness doesn't really apply. It's not as relevant. So I am one of the few authors at this point that doesn't pay attention to to sales so when when my next books come out when the mommy and me comes out and then i have the uh, two best friends with grandma and best friends with grandpa when those books come out in 2025 i'll pay a lot more attention hopefully those will be better sellers 
but I um, don't, I don't even have, I think my bitsykemper.com is my website. And I have, I think I have links, but I don't even promote the sale of those books because they're, they're not important to me, which is weird to say as an author. I'm not saying I'm not proud of them. I'm proud of the books, but the sale of them is less important to me than the, the schools and libraries getting to know about them. Does that make, yeah. I mean, I hope that makes sense because it's, it's a different process. It's a school, it's a different process than, than, than one or two parents buying it. It's a school and library process. It's different than it's selling it on Amazon. Okay. Okay. So I really like the idea you said it's not about the sales of the book, but maybe just to impart knowledge. I myself, as I said, I'm also an author as well. And although I don't focus more on the sales, but just to impart uh, more knowledge, because even, even on my blog, I myself on my blog, almost all my books are free. I've, there's a, a link out there where you can download or request my free books and you just download them. But oh, my mind focus was, although I've not read through, most of your books to see maybe um, the, the, the kind of types of books. But since you, you say you are, you, you are writing a new book that is mainly for Christians, I would like to. So if, if that book come out, please try to um, contact me. I also try and also promote the books to my, my emails, also to my groups out there, and maybe they will try and contact with your book as well. So uh, BC, without wasting much time, uh, what are some I didn't ask you maybe what you want to add up to our discussion today as as we go on. Um, let's see. I guess you know I don't I don't want to focus too much on moms because that's um, the, my next book is is really mostly for moms, um, and probably that would be just a subsection of your um, of your audience, but I guess just the, the concept of, of, of micro moments in, in general, that's what I focus on in my uh, Mommy and Me Micro Moments book. And just the ability to capture just a very small moment of time can have a big impact on just taking literally five seconds out of your day to say thanks, to say, to just take a breath in, take a breath out, and just be calm and capture a moment in your brain and you know look around and say this is my family look around and say look at that sunset look around and say wow that flower is amazing just to be able to capture your own micro moment in time and offer thanks that it's there that you're here that you're listening to this now i'm offering thank i'm, I'm offering a micro moment of thanks right now that 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 you're listening that pastor henry found me that i found pastor henry and i'm here to talk to people i mean this is a micro moment for me of thanksgiving so Whoa. i encourage other people to to capture them all right all right so 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 um uh bitsy um your, your books, uh, let me just dive a little into your books. So your books, uh, let's say, what is the actual uh, focus of your books? Do you write to inspire? Do you write to educate? Do you write to uh, make people happy? What is the main focus or what is the main motive of you writing children's book? Well, um, for the most part, I would say I wrote children's books as for to give kids more opportunities really to find a friend to give kids more opportunities to sit down with a friend in their lap and either be read to or or read on their own because i found so much comfort in reading as a kid that i love the fact that i might be responsible for offering comfort to somebody else uh, the, the topics might be boring to some people. Like one of my topics is, um, I wrote a, a book for teens on the constitutional right to privacy. And that was because somebody said to me, hey, would you like to write a book on the constitutional right to privacy? And I am not an expert in that. It was kind of like writing a term paper 
on a class I never took, but I did months of research. And for the record, there is no word privacy in the Constitution. It's all derived and you, you, there is a constitutional right to it, but it's not technically written in the Constitution. Anyways, the reason I embrace that challenge is because I figured I want to make this a book that kids want to read. And I figured I have an opportunity to write this better than anybody else. So, you know, the chapters are like, you can't go through my garbage, can you? Or, um, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, just silly things like that. Something that's going to capture the attention of a teen who would otherwise never, ever in their right mind read a book about the constitutional right to privacy. So that's why I write. I write so that I can give a kid an opportunity to sit down and either entertain themselves or have a friend. All right, BC. Okay, so uh, I did mention about the LGBTQ. So what is your say about the LGBTQ, the lesbianism, the bisexual, the homosexuality, the transgender, and all those? What is your say about those um, uh, movements, BC? Yeah. That, uh, that question surprises me. My, my answer is to just love everyone as Jesus did. I think as long as anybody isn't, it's kind of like someone coming up to me and trying to tell me that their religion is better than mine. A anything of that sort. I love people as Jesus would. It's not something I come across in my writing. Okay, so, so uh, BC, so um, the reason why I ask those questions is because uh, in most parts of the um, American cities, um, it is highly, most places are most um, highly advocated there. That is why I try to venture into those and issues. You know, secondly, you did say you were, you were a Christian, you were a Catholic, and, and, and um, also as a Christian, uh, there are some churches we do accept uh, lesbians. Uh, it's not even to accept that lesbians. We are all human beings, but just that is a kind of uh, moral um, leakage out there that we have to maybe try to educate them on, on those things. So, since you are a children's um, author, children's book writer, maybe in your income books you can try to educate children on the dangers of. Um, lesbianism, the dangers of homosexuality, the dangers of uh, bisexualism, the danger of bestiality, the danger of uh, this movement. Because as I said, that there are many people in the hospitals who are dying. People are having strange, strange sicknesses. People are having strange, strange diseases because of this movement, the, the homosexuality. So uh, if you're writing your books, please try and then um, educate the children because they are our future leaders and uh, I think we try to educate them in such way uh, it can help uh, rather. Okay, well, I, do, I, I don't believe that is my calling. And that's, that, that, those aren't the kinds of books that I write, but I, um, I, I do understand what you're, the point that you're making from from your perspective so as uh, so bc yeah, my, my... Mm -hmm. i'm listening yeah i i have a the i have about one, 15 12 to 15 books that i'm working like i'm in different kinds of phases on uh different um i have a whole bunch of different projects that i'm in the middle of currently okay so so bc so uh which part of america are you are you in the northern part or southern part of america i am in northern california which is on the west coast of america okay okay bc okay so i think we've done a lot today uh bc so bc so where, where, where can we find you and where, where can we find your books? Where do you have a blog, a site, maybe yeah, where my, you can get yeah, your books? Yeah, my website is yeah, my website is bitsykemper.com. B I T S Y K E M P E R dot com. Bitsykemper.com. And um, 
I have links to a video on tips for writing pictures book picture books. I have all kinds of blogs on on writing and tips for picture book writers. And I even have actually I'm going through it right now in November, a 31 day challenge for picture for for authors. If you want to try to increase your social media, gather it, your, your social media reach. And um, you can do that anytime. It doesn't have to be November right now, but you're welcome to sign up for the challenges and just learn about me at bitsykemper.com. Wow, well, that's great, uh, Bitsy. So your books are on Amazon, right? Um, you can find them on Amazon. Some of them are out of print, so they're super expensive. Um, but I believe most of them are available on Amazon. All right, Bitsy. The, the books okay. that I have coming out will definitely be available. The books that come out, the Mommy and Me Micro Moments will definitely be available on Amazon starting in April of next year, 24. All right, that's great um, having you, Bitsy, on, on our discussion today. So uh, that is how we end our discussion today. How with me, Bitsy um, um, Kemper. Did I write Did I mention your name right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. <laughs> that is uh, right. So I had with me Bitsy uh, Kemper uh, from the America, North uh, uh, California out there. And this is your, your host, uh, Henry Diodu Apia Kran, as a host on Isaiah Discussion. So as time goes on, um, you have more connection with us. So uh, stay and then share this uh, discussion with your loved ones, share the link with your loved ones, and just get connected so you can become blessed. So that is how we end our discussion. So